So we've reached a point with our SOAP service where we can successfully call and get a successful response back. But if we look at the format of our request, you can see that we are using namespaces. So we've got a SOAP namespace declared against the actual name SOAP. And then we use that inside of our XML in the various places where those elements need to be in that namespace. And equally on our actual service request operation, we namespace that using SER for service or any kind of shortcut that we want. And again, at the top level of the XML is where we declare that particular SER namespace. So declaring your namespaces at the top of your XML is typically a good practice as it simplifies the rest of your XML document. But if we compare that to what we're getting with our response, so we can see that we've got no namespace prefixes on anything in our XML response, and we are declaring namespaces pretty much where they're needed. So the get weather forecast response and everything below it falls into the some service namespace. So we declare it on that element there, or that's the way that it's working at the moment. And likewise for the SOAP envelope and body, there is equally an XML namespace declaration. So what we want to do is tidy this up and have our response document use XML prefixes. OK, so let's dive in and see how we can make our response document have some XML prefixes in it. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the SOAP constants and we're going to add in that SOAP namespace prefix. So we've got our two namespaces for SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2. Let's add in a constant for the prefix that gives us a constant of SOAP. Then we can look at our SOAP response envelope. And what we can do is we can add in an extra field inside our SOAP response envelope. So it's inherited into both our SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2 responses. And this is something that the serializer will look for automatically and respect if it finds an element attributed with XML namespace declarations. So now that we've got that element, we can go and change our SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2 classes, and we can add a constructor into this class, and we add a namespace into that namespace collection, essentially. And we give it the default namespace prefix, which we just declared as being SOAP. And we tell it that we want it to be the SOAP 1.1 namespace. And then we can do exactly the same with our 1.2 class as well. Now, if we run this up and we run in our test request, that succeeds. And we can now see that the SOAP elements are now prefixed with SOAP as we would expect. And at the top level, we've declared that SOAP namespace with the prefix of SOAP. So we can now use that throughout our XML wherever we need to use that namespace. So that's got us some of the way there, but we want to do the same thing with the get weather forecast response. So let's go and have a look at how we can deal with that as well. So let's open up our get weather forecast response. And just to illustrate the point, let's make everything within our get weather forecast in the empty namespace. What that gives us now is everything inside of the get weather forecast is now in the empty namespace. So let's go into our SOAP response body. And we've already got a default namespace prefix here of the SER that we want to use. And we're already using the default namespace to actually put the SOAP response body or elements within the SOAP response body into this some service namespace, which is what we're seeing. So what we can do is follow what we did before. Over in our get weather forecast response, we can add our namespace declaration and we can implement a constructor in this class and we can use that SOAP response body default namespace and default prefix. So this is the SER and our some service. And now when we run this up, we get our namespace declared with a prefix this time. And that prefix is then used on that particular element. And we've also lost that XML namespace empty declaration for all of our sub elements that don't actually reside in any namespace at all, which makes it much easier for us to use our XML and copy and paste it places without worrying about namespaces.
But what we really want, if we look back at our request, is all of our namespaces are declared at the top level of the document. Whereas when we look at our response, we've got namespaces sporadically interspersed in the XML, which isn't what we want. We really want this declaration moved up to the top level here so that we can then reference any element using any of the namespaces just using their prefix. So let's go and have a look at how we can do that. We can remove all of this because we don't want this to happen at this level of the document against the get weather forecast response. So then if you remember, we've got our base controller that our SOAP controllers are inheriting off of. And inside of here, we've got a method called create SOAP response envelope which is a virtual. So inside of our controller, so if we pick our service SOAP 1.1 controller, we can override the create SOAP response envelope method. And we can just hang on to that base envelope. And remember inside of our envelope is the namespace prefix that we added. So we've got the NS prefix that we can add a prefix into and so we can just add in that default soap re response body namespace and prefix which is the ser and some service namespace then we can just return the envelope back now when we run that up we can see that we've got no interspersed xml prefixes defined throughout the document they're all defined at the top of the document all of our SOAP prefix and our service prefix all nicely defined at the top. And our relevant elements fall into the various different namespaces and they're all nicely prefixed for us. So that's it. Messing around with namespaces and prefixes to tidy up our XML response. Job done. Let's move on to the next one. So quick thank you to my sponsors. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.